Hi, I'm Richard Rogers, and I absolutely hope that you enjoy today's spiritual message. You know, we at Unity of Phoenix Spiritual Center are committed to helping people live better lives. We're going to provide you tools over and over, spiritual tools, that allow you to live your best possible life. And if you want to leave a donation, just continue to allow the work that we do to support other people just like you, we say thank you. Thank you for your generosity, because this ministry is committed to making the world a better place. Okay, so we're going to start tonight by being willing to acknowledge the places in our recent past where we feel like we've fallen down. Okay? And I, and I want you to really begin to just, just open your mind to those areas where you feel like you've been knocked down. Anybody feel like they've been knocked down by life recently? Right? And, and what, one of those things that happens is... Our ego hates it when we get knocked down, right? Because we all, we all want to be, like, we all want to have the perfect season, right? You know, we all want to go 29 and 0 or 13 and 0 or whatever the, whatever the sport is. We all want to feel like we're undefeated, right? And so our ego really takes a hit when we feel like we've been bumped, like, if I was really doing my spiritual work, this stuff should not be happening. Right? Have you ever thought that to yourself? Like, if I'm doing my spiritual work, then what is the deal with this, right? And, and the reality is, I want you to really see that if, we, if Jesus is our way shower, this week he gets bumped. Like, he gets bumped hard. He gets a full body slam check into the wall bumped hard, right? And does it prevent the miracle from happening? No, right? So I want to talk tonight about the resurrection. Because the resurrection is different than just dying and being reborn right? Your soul has died and been reborn hundreds of times, right? But the resurrection is literally different because it is a different kind of rebirth, if, right? So this is, this is happy you, right? A little lopsided, but this is happy you, right? And sometimes in life, we have a fall, Right? And we fall, we get bumped, we, life happens, it hurts, we get disappointed, we're frustrated. Now, what we usually wanna pray for is restoration, right? We pray for, claim divine order, we claim divine justice, we claim, because what we wanna do is we wanna get back to here, right? Because now we're made whole. Right? Well, we think, well, now we're made whole. But the reality is, we've just kind of gotten back to where we were. We, we didn't move forward. We didn't move up. We're just trying to get back to where we were. That's not, recon that, that's not resurrection. That's just being restored. Now, being restored, there's nothing wrong with being restored, but it's not resurrection, right? Resurrection is when you end up here. Like through crucifixion and resurrection, Jesus ended up in the body of light. That was a significant improvement, right? And tonight, I want you to really be willing to look at the places where you're trying to go back to something or hoping to get back to what you wanted or what you had or what you thought was so good. That's not what I want to talk about tonight. What I want to talk about is moving to the highest level of good. And what would it look like, feel like, if you were resurrected into the highest level of good that God has for you? Would you be willing to claim that? Right? Because that's what Easter's about. Easter isn't a promise that you can go back to what you had. Jesus didn't go back to what he had. Right? He just didn't come out and start hanging out with the guys again. Right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Right? But that's not what happened. Right? He actually moved into the body of light. 
right? And, and when he was in the body of light, he was still doing his ministry. He was showing up here and he was showing up there and he was still doing healings, but he was doing it from a, a completely different point of view. That is the resurrection. And what I want us to see is how many times we lower our expectation to just trying to get back to what we had, which isn't really interesting because you've already done it. It looks like, oh no, this is as good as it's gonna get. No, the resurrection says, I want the highest level of spiritual good that God has for me. And I want us tonight to really open a space to make peace with the bumps. I have two kids, uniquely different children. My son, when it came time to learn how to ride a bike, was only semi-interested in the activity. He did not like to fall down, right? He didn't really like it to fall down. He, he, would, he would pedal. He wanted his training wheels as close to the ground as he could get them. You know, there's some kids that want their training wheels up a little higher so they get a little wobble. No wobble. We want those things, stand, we want them secure, and we want them down, and we, if he could have had super like extended ones, he would have done that on his training wheels. He wanted them down. Now my daughter, she was fierce when it came to her pink bike. She had a pink bike with purple streamers that came off the handlebars. She was a terror on wheels. They're 23 months apart. When we took his training wheels off at like 15, no, I'm just kidding, don't. <laughs> no, don't. If you tell him I said that, I, it's, Easter is going to have a whole other meaning, right? So when we took his training wheels off at whatever age it was, she wanted her training wheels off too. She did not care. She wanted to be riding a bike like you're supposed to ride a bike. And it meant that she bumped, right? She bumped. She ran into things. She, it, was, it was not always pretty because she was two years younger. But, but she was committed to it, right? When they both learned how to walk, it was a constant process of falling down. They did it over and over again. They fell down. They hit. They bumped. As much as I wanted to grab them, they were going. So what I want you to see is that life is meant for bumps, that it's not the issue. The issue is that your soul is bigger than that. And when your soul claims the resurrecting power of God, you actually are like on the express train to another level because you've claimed it. See, over and over again at Easter, we talk about death and rebirth, death and rebirth, and, and we, we begin to think of it as just the cycle of death and rebirth. But that's not what Jesus really did. He resurrected. He, he didn't play the game that most souls are playing. He actually moved to a higher level of good. And, and that can only happen if you're willing to claim the power of resurrection. Like, you, you get as much time as you want, right? You get as much time to, and you can take as many little baby steps as you want, but the model is boom, done. Right? And what I want to challenge us tonight is I want you to look at the area in your life where, where you're hoping to go back to what you had. Does everybody have at least one area in your life where you're hoping to get back to what you had? I, I want to go back to this level of health, or I want to go back to this level of finances, or I want to go back to my, when my relationship was like this, or I want to go back to when it was like this, or, you know, make America great again, or whatever it is, right? But what I want to challenge you tonight is I don't want you going backwards. I don't want that to be your model to, to someday when it was perfect or you thought it was good enough, that that's what you're shooting for. I actually want you to, to be willing to get to the resurrection energy where you go to the highest level of good, where, where you're willing to claim the restoration of your soul, the restoration of your finances, the restoration of your work, that you're claiming the, the complete, the complete, so, somebody say it for me, I blanked on it, 
No, that yes, right? That you're claiming um, resurrection, that you're claiming the whole deal. How many of you, have you ever heard of, there's a Japanese art called kitsugi. Have you ever heard of kitsugi? You know what kitsugi is? Kitsugi is this Japanese art where broken pottery is fixed by lacing it in gold. So wherever it's cracked, wherever it's broken, they lace it in gold, and it actually becomes more valuable than the original piece, right? And so the, 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 the crack actually becomes the thing of the most value. How many of you, because uh, we love comebacks. How many of you on Sunday watched Tiger, right? Mr. Comeback, right? His, what, his fourth Masters win on Sunday? His fifth, right. He was at four and came to fifth, right? His fifth Masters win, right? So a lot of us stopped what we were doing to pay attention to his comeback. Because we love comebacks. I got a call from my wife saying, I know you're probably not watching this as an open house. I know you're probably not watching this, but, but you need to be watching. Tiger is on a tear and you need to see it, right? And, if, and, they, and it was so impressive that they played the whole thing over again, CBS did, right after he won because so many people missed it. They wanted to see it because we want to watch that level of comeback. How many of you have ever seen a Rocky movie? Rocky gets knocked all the way down, and then it gets knocked down again and again and again because we want to see that spirit in us that is born for a resurrection, that is born for a greater day, and that's what's interesting, that over and over again, it's okay that you've been knocked down, you know, and then on Monday, right, we watch Notre Dame, the cathedral burned down. Right? Within 24 hours, the president of France is saying, we will rebuild it in what? Five years. Five years. Right? And over and over again. And the challenge for all of us is, if they try to rebuild it exactly the way it was, that's not it. Because that lasted for over 800 years. What we need to do is rebuild it for the next thousand years. That that could be a cathedral for the next thousand years, taking the greatness that was in it, taking the designs and the art and the thing that was fabulous about it, but not designing it the way it was, but honoring it what it was, and then designing for the future. That's what we're talking about. That, that is absolutely the next step for all of us, is to really look at how God's calling us to the next highest level of good, and that interests me. I am ready to resurrect. Will you say that with me? I am ready to resurrect. One more time. I am ready to resurrect. So there, there's three aspects of Jesus that I want to talk about tonight. The first one is Jesus the man, right? Jesus, right? That is the human incarnate. That is the physical expression. Does that make sense? So Jesus was a fully functioning man. Right? He was a person. He was a human. Touch him. He was there. Right? Now, the next level is Jesus Christ. Now, when we use the term Jesus Christ, what we're acknowledging is Jesus was a human named Jesus, but he was expressing the Christ. He was dis expressing his divine nature. He was exp it wasn't his last name. They weren't the Christ. They didn't live. Right? It, it, it was his divine nature. So he was Jesus the Christ, right? Then what interestingly happens is after he resurrects, Paul begins to call him Christ Jesus. And when he's being called Christ Jesus, that is the resurrected Christ. Now he's actually, the Christ is actually first. It's the most important part. And, and Jesus is just the expression of that Christ consciousness, right? And that's where, where we are today, is that, that when we resurrect, when we invite that resurrecting activity of God, we are actually taking on that energy, that promise, that possibility that he fully lived, and that's available to all of us, that all of us have this ability. So when Jesus said, 
when, when Paul said, I'm sorry, when Paul said, the Christ Jesus then, I have reason to be proud of my works in God, for I will not venture to speak of anything except that Christ has accomplished through me to bring the Gentiles to obedience by word and deed. Jesus said it this way in, in John 20, 17. Jesus said, do not hold me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brother and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. So what is the ascension? The ascension is that state of consciousness that is the highest level of good for all of us, right? That each one of us can ascend in our life to the highest level of good that we can have. Now, why is that different, or how is that different, right? What happens in, in this process is we're used to taking baby spiritual steps. And there's nothing wrong with baby spiritual steps. But when you really invite the presence and the activity of the resurrection, you're actually giving yourself permission to move from wherever you are to the highest level of good. And that highest level of good, it, it, it's, it's almost impossible for it to be known to you beforehand. So the challenge is in, the, in this process is that you might not have a mental picture of where you're going, but you're pulling the cord anyway. And the way that I imagine it is like you're in your little spaceship, you're in your little projectile, you're in your, in your thing, and you're saying, your soul is saying, I'm ready for the highest level of good, even though I don't know what it is, that I'm willing to trust God that much, that I'm willing to move to the highest level of good, even though I don't know what it is, because I trust that when I get there, I'm going to like it. And if I don't like it, I can always slide back down into darkness. I guess, right? You could, right? But it just doesn't happen that way. So if you got to pick one area in your life for your homework, if you got to pick one area in your life that you were willing to practice the resurrecting power of Christ, the resurrecting power of God, what area would you pick? Would you do it like the whole package? Would you, would you think about your soul? Would you think about it in your work? Would you think about it in your family? Would you think about it in your finances? What would you pick? If you only got to pick one, if you only got to pick one, what would you pick? See, I've been playing with this idea for the last couple of weeks. And I cannot tell you the impact it's having on our lives to claim over and over the resurrecting power of God. And to, say, to tell, actually say to myself, I'm ready to resurrect. I'm ready to resurrect. My soul is ready to resurrect. Because there's something that happens when it's like you, you've, you've spoken the, the code to your soul that it's been waiting to hear. Anybody know Barbara Marks Hubbard? Barbara Marks Hubbard was a very... I, a spiritual teacher. I had the opportunity of speaking with her and meeting with her multiple times. And I had an opportunity um, several years ago in Maui. We were both speaking at an AG&T event. And the next morning we had lunch together. And what was so, it was one of those conversations that I will always remember. And what she talked about is her belief that in the DNA of every individual is every possibility for what we could be. That it's already been pre-wired in us. That it's already in our DNA. That in our DNA is everything that humanity has ever been and everything that we could ever be. It is already wired in us, our full potential. 
And what she talked about is that through the activity of the resurrection, we actually begin to activate our DNA. We actually begin to activate what's already been pre-programmed in us that as we activate it, as we call forth, as we actually begin to affirm it and pray about it, we actually begin to download a new operating system that actually awakens what was pre-wired in us from the beginning of time. That, like, the, like we've been passing this DNA down from generation to generation to generation, but every generation has the full capacity of the fully awakened, the fully the fully awake spiritual man or woman of God, we're just taking baby steps to get there. But Jesus stepped into it fully. He stepped into it completely. And that's the opportunity. That's what interests me. That's the challenge that I lay before you, is what would happen if you claim the full power of spirit to fully resurrect? Well, Richard, I'm not sure I know how to do that. Got it, done. You don't know how to do it. Let's just, let's cover that one, right? You don't know how to do it. All you know how to do is claim the spiritual idea that you were willing to move to the highest level of good and to know that you're in your DNA, you've already been pre-wired for it. It's like a house that's already been pre-wired for all the internet and all the alarm system, it's already been pre-wired, it's pre-wired. It's already there. Now we just have to activate it. And would you be willing to activate it? Would you be willing to claim it? And to see how far we can go. I call forth the resurrecting power of Christ in my soul right now. Together, I call forth the resurrecting power of Christ in my soul now. 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 One more time. I call forth the resurrecting power of Christ in my soul right now. Let's take it into prayer. And I invite you to open your mind, your heart, your soul to the full activation of the Christ. That we can actually move to the highest level of good. That we can do this in any area of our life, in our relationships, in our health, physicality, in our finances. That we can call forth the full activation, the full resurrection. That there is no area in our life that is outside of this activating power of God. And that as we call it forth, we can feel the power within us beginning to reorganize. That we are not here just for the old ways, just to get back to the old ways. We are here to demonstrate all the good that God is. To fully activate the Christ. To fully activate all that God is in us. And so we awaken fully and completely to all that we are. And we allow the glory of God to fully manifest as us, through us, with us. That we're it. So in the name and through the power of the living Christ, we give thanks for all that God is, all that we were created to be, and all that we will be in God's name. And so it is. Amen.